Welcome students, in previous class we understood the idea of indefinite integrals, we understood what it meant by an area function, we also understood what is the idea of entry derivative. Then we defined the integral of f x d x as collection of all anti derivatives, this c belonging to a set of reals. Towards the end, we understood the geometrical interpretation of this family of curves or the anti derivative. And we also looked at the area function from the perspective of integral considering it as integral which we said that this is a definite integral. So, these are the things which we learnt in our previous class. Today, we will look at further that what are the properties of indefinite integrals, how can we evaluate the integral of a function which will be given to us. So, before we start we take one example where I will show you the importance for the constant c which we take when we take the integral. So, suppose that that we are asked to find out anti derivative f x of function small f x which is given as 5 x raised to the power 4 plus 2 such that the value of anti derivative is given to us. So, it not only says that we have to find out the anti derivative f x, but also it says that that we have to find out that anti derivative which has the value f value as 5 when x equals to 1. So, out of the family of all the anti derivatives, we have to look for a particular anti derivative, we will show you how it can be done. So, from our previous experience of anti derivative of a function of the type x raised to power n, we can figure out that d by d x of x raised to power 5 plus 2 x turns out to be and therefore, this function is considered as the anti derivative. We need the anti derivative such that f of 1 is equal to 5 which will mean that 1 plus 2 plus c equals to 5 giving the value of c as 2. So, the anti derivative f x from here gives the value x raised to power 5 plus 2 x plus 2. So, in this case you notice that 
that we have got a unique antiderivative x is to power 5 plus 2 x plus 2 which gives you the value when x is equals to 1 as 5. So, if we are given a condition such that the condition which was given in this case as f 1 is equals to 5, the specific value of that constant can be evaluated. In general, we consider this constant as any arbitrary constant. Next, we shall look at the properties of indefinite integrals. The first property relates as we told initially that integration can be considered as inverse process of differentiation. The property d by d x of integral f x d x is the function itself. That means, that it, the, the integral of the function and if you take the derivative of that integral, you will get the same function. Second property is that integral of the derivative of the function is the function plus a constant. Now, look at these two expressions first before we go for the proof of these equations. The first expression says that that differentiation of a integral of a function is the function itself while in the second case it says the integral of the differential of the function is function plus constant and therefore, we, we, we do not say that the two operations the differential and the integrals are inverse operation to each other, but we say that they are they can be thought of as an inverse operation because had they been inverse operation then after application of both the operations simultaneously they should have given you the function itself, but here in this case it is a constant. So, if, if we consider uniqueness up to the constant then they can be thought of as a inverse operation. Proof. So, property A can be directly proved using definition. We know from the idea of antiderivative is that d by d x of f x equals to small f x such that f capital f x is the antiderivative of small f x. Then integral of f x d x is capital f x plus c. So, now we will apply the derivative operator on this integral assuming that capital F is the antiderivative for small f x. So, if we apply the derivative here it will give us d by d x of integral f x d x will be same as it applied on the right hand side d by d x of f x plus c which is same as d f over d x because the constant derivative of the constant will be 0. So, and we already know from this relationship that d f over d x is nothing but f x. So, d by d x of integral f x turns out to be the function f x itself. So, d by d x of integral f x d x is function itself. So, this shows property A. For property B, we again use the definition. So, we note that d by d x of f x which is basically f prime x. So, now if you look at it again from the perspective of the definition of antiderivative, then small f x is antiderivative for f prime x and therefore, using the definition of integral we can write that 
integral of f prime x dx is f x plus c for c belonging to the set of reals and this is what the same as property b f prime x dx is equals to f x plus c. So, we have shown this property using definition that integral of a derivative is same function plus a constant. Second property which we will look at is that if we are given that the derivative of two integrals are same that means that for two functions f x and g x if the d by d x of integral f x d x is same as d by d x of integral g x d x then both the functions integral f x and g x they belong to same family of functions. How can we, if we, if we show that? So, what we do is that we take the entire expression, the expression implies that d by d x of integral of f x d x minus integral of g x d x 0. So, first you transfer this in d by d x of integral g x d x to the left hand side, then take the operator outside and then write this expression in this fashion. Since this equality is true for all x and therefore, this equality is also true for all x and this is possible that the derivative of some function of x equaling to 0, the possibility is only if the function itself is a constant which means that integral of f x d x minus integral of g x d x is equals to a constant let us say c and which will mean that that if I transfer g x on the right hand side then the collection of all functions integral g x d x plus c 1 let us call it as c 1 such that c 1 is in r and similarly if I take the function f x on the right hand side then integral f x d x plus c 2 such that c 2 belonging to r. So, they represent the family of curves for, for these integrals and therefore, the two integrals because these two families because of this equality here they are equivalent. So, we usually do not as, as these families are equivalent we usually do not bother about the constants which are written here and we write that integral of f x d x is same as integral of g x d x. That means, the constant uh, is, is omitted here further we look for some more properties of uh, integral operator. These properties are similar to the property of differential operator which you have already seen. The first property is linearity property which I will write in this in the, in the following manner integral of f x plus g x d x is same as integral of f x d x plus integral of g x d x. Look at the functions. It says that the integral of sum of two functions is same as sum of the integrals of those two functions. The integral basically distributed on the on the sum. The proof is simple.
what we do here is that that you take left hand side and differentiate it d by d x of the left hand side gives you as we know from property 1 which we have already shown is that the derivative of integral is the function itself. So, using the property 1 which we have already proved is that the derivative of this integral is nothing but f x plus g x. This we say that is relation 1 which is coming from the left hand side. Now, similar thing we will do on the right hand side, differentiate the right hand side as we already know that derivative is distributive on addition and therefore, we can write it as d by d x on integral of f x d x plus d by d x of integral on g x d x. Now, again using property 1, we know that d by d x of integral is same as the function f x plus integral d by d x of integral g x is the same as function g x. Consider is at relation 2. So, what we have shown here is that that if we differentiate the two functions on the left hand side and right hand side, we get the same derivative and from the property previous property they belong to the same uh, family of curves and therefore, this property is true. So, this proves that the linearity property on the integrals is followed. Second property is for scalar multiplication. So, what it says here is that that integration of k times f x d x is same as k times integration of f x d x. Where k is some constant this also we shall prove using the same idea as we have done for the previous property d by d x of the left hand side turns out to be and the d by d x of right hand side we know that scalar k can be taken outside for the different from, up from the differential operator giving us again using the property 1. So, again similarly as in, in previous case we, we claim that k f x d x is same as k f x d x. What we shall do now is that we shall club these two properties together and put them in a general formula. So, let us say for constants k 1, k 2 dot 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 k n and functions f 1 x, f 2 x dot 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 f n x, we have the relationship that 
integration of k 1 f 1 plus k 2 f 2 plus dot 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 k n f n d x is same as you take the k 1 outside and integrate f 1 sorry d x plus k 2 and then k n f n x d x. This property helps in evaluating the integrals where the functions are written in certain linear combination. We will give you one quick example. So, suppose we are to find out the integral of the function a x square plus b x plus c. To find out the integral of this function, we write it in this fashion. Now, since we know the linearity property, therefore, we can write this a b c being constants here a integral of x is squared plus b integral of x plus c times integral and there is 1. So, therefore, we write it as integral 1 d x. We already have seen or we can even uh, use the method of antiderivative here is that that if we take the differentiation of x cube by 3, we will get x square and therefore, this we can write as x cube by 3 plus b x. You have already seen that this is for x square by 2 plus small c the integration for 1. That means, if we differentiate x, you will get 1. Therefore, the function x should appear here and finally, the constant. So, we will call it as c 1 because this c is already appearing here. So, it should not confuse us. So, the integral of this linear combination turns out to be this function, which could easily be evaluated by breaking this integral into three separate integrals and evaluating them. This technique will help us further in solving certain complicated problems. Now, we shall use our knowledge of differentiation and write certain formulas which will help us in evaluating the integrals during problem solving. These formulas are very basic formula and you should try to remember them as much as possible. So, what I will do on the left hand side I will write the corresponding formula of the derivative and on the right hand side I will write the corresponding integral. So, we have this d by d x of x raised to power n plus 1 by n plus 1 as x raised to power n. So, corresponding integral of x raised to power n d x becomes x raised to power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant c. Here we must note that n cannot be equals to minus 1. We will deal with this minus 1 case separately, which will come in due course of time. As a particular case, we know that d by d x of x is 1 and therefore, the integral of 1 d x we have already seen, it turns out to be x plus constant. Certain trigonometric functions, for example, d by d x of sin x is cosine x, and therefore, integral of cosine x is sin x plus c. d by d x of cosine x turns out to be minus of sin x, therefore, we will put minus sign here. 
So, that when we write the integral, it becomes integral of sin x is minus cos sin x plus the constant d by d x of tan x is sec square x and therefore, integral of sorry I missed a d x here sec square x d x equals to tan x plus c. These are all standard formulas which you can find in any of the reference book d by d x of cot x is again minus cos sec square x, but I shall write it in this manner. So, that it becomes integral of cos sec square x is minus cot x plus constant d by d x of sec x is sec x tan x, which gives you the integral of sec x tan x d x is equals to sec x plus constant d by d x of similarly cosec x is cosec x and cot x with a negative sign here, which again similarly as earlier I will take it here. So, that it becomes integral of cosec x cot x d x equals to minus cosec x plus c. Further, we shall look at the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions. So, we have seen it during previous class d by d x of sin inverse x is 1 over square root of 1 minus x is squared and therefore, the integration for 1 over 1 minus x is square square the root d x is sin inverse x plus constant and also we have seen that d y d x of minus cos inverse x is also same as square root of 1 minus x square and therefore, 1 minus. So, we should not get confused with the same function because we have already shown you that these two functions belong to same family of curve and therefore, sin inverse x and minus cosine inverse x uh, they can happen to be the integral of same function. Further we look at some more formulas as d by d x of tan inverse x we know that it is 1 by 1 plus x square and therefore, integration of 1 by 1 plus x square d x is equals to tan x plus constant and parallel to the previous d by d x of cot inverse x is minus 1 over 1 plus x square, which takes minus here and therefore, d x over 1 plus x is squared is minus of it missed here cot inverse x plus the constant d by d x of sec inverse x is 1 over x square root of x square minus 1 and therefore, integration of x square root of x square minus 1 turns out to be sec inverse x plus constant. Similarly, d by d x of cosec inverse x with a negative sign equals to 
1 over x square root of x square minus 1. Therefore, integral dx over x square root of x square minus 1 can also be written as minus of cos x inverse x plus constant c. So, with trigonometric and inverse trigonometric function, we have the relationship of logarithmic and exponential function. We have the knowledge of d by dx of e raised to power x as e raised to power x, which gives us the exponential of x integral dx same as e raised to power x. In fact, we can write that d by dx of e raised to power n x divided by n as e raised to power n x for n bigger than 0. So, that integral of e raised to power n x dx is same as e raised to power n x divided by n plus a constant for n bigger than 0 or rather n not equals to 0 the same is true for n negative as well. because as n becomes 0 here, this function will become 1 and we already know the integral for 1 dx. And we also know the dy dx for log of mod x that is 1 by x and therefore, integral of 1 by x dx will be written as log of mod x plus constant. So, this uh, uh, case which, which when we are discussing for x raised to power n, n naught equals to uh, a minus 1. So, you can understand that, that the case when n equals to minus 1 can be taken care of by this formula. These formulas, let me remark uh, that they are very important and since they are very fundamental, so we should uh, remember them because we will be using them very frequently. One more important remark which I would like to put here before I proceed with the example is that it may not be possible to find out the integral of all functions in terms of elementary functions. There may be some function for which we may not know that what is its antiderivative by inspection or even by evaluation. One such example may be e raised to power minus x square dx. So, finding out that the antiderivative for this function in terms of elementary function that means that polynomial, trigonometric, inverse trigonometric, exponential etcetera is not possible. So, certain cases we may not be able to evaluate and in those cases we leave indefinite integrals in their own form as they are. So, now we shall look at some examples depending on the properties and integrals which we have learnt. The first example that I have chosen is very simple. To find out the integral of the function 4 e raised to power 3 x plus 1 d x. So, if you look at this integral, first of all it is sum of two functions and therefore, we use the property of distributive nature of integral on summation and write it in this form e raised to power 3 x taking constant 4 outside plus second integral 1 d x. Now, from the formula we know e raised to power n x. So, integral of e raised to power 3 x 3 x d x turns out to be e raised to power 3 x by 3 plus constant. So, we will put it as integral e raised to power 3 x by 3 plus 4 times that constant. So, we will call it as 4 c 1 plus integral 1 this we already know that this is integral x plus the constant c 2. So, that the entire term becomes 4 by 3 e raised to power 3 x plus x plus 4 c 1 plus c 2 since c 1 and c 2 both are constant. So, we can club them together and we can rename them as a new constant. So, it will become 4 by 3 
e raised to power 3 x plus x plus a constant c. So, the integral turns out to be this much. Now, here you, you, you can also do that, that while integrating either you substitute the constant when you are integrating an integral or you can also do that you can substitute the constant at the end. So, many times we do not we or we may not substitute the constants immediately while evaluating a certain integral rather we will be doing it at the end by plugging a single, a, a single constant. So, we will take another example for you say we are to evaluate integral of square root of x minus 1 by square root of x whole square d x. So, many times we may not have the application of integrals which we have learnt uh, uh, directly, we may have to do some simplification. For example, here if you see if we expand the square what we will get is that square root is square means x plus 1 by square root x square means 1 by x minus 2 times the product that is 2. Apply the linearity property here. So, what we will get is that integral of x dx plus integral 1 by x dx minus 2 times integral 1 dx, which you can evaluate as here using the formula x is square by 2 plus 1 by x this is log of mod x minus 2 x plus a constant of integration. Therefore, this is the integral for this case. So, a problem which may look initially a little bit complicated, but if we use certain relationships which we already know, this can be simplified and further we can figure out that the integral will become very easy. Similar example another one which I will take for you is let us take x cube minus x square plus x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 dx. So, it looks a little complicated at the beginning, but if you look carefully you can figure out that in first two terms you can take x square as common. So, that will become x minus 1 plus the second term as x minus 1 whole divided by x minus 1. Now, you see by dividing by x minus 1 we will get x square plus 1. So, the complicated looking term here is nothing but x square plus 1 for which now we can immediately figure out the integral x square and therefore, it will be x cube by 3 1 and therefore, it is x and constant. So, notice that that we have not distributed now this integral over summation we have directly written it. So, in due course of time with practice you can directly write the integrals and we will omit all these integral details when we are evaluating the integral. We will put another example for you using some trigonometric relationship example 4. Say we have to evaluate sec square x divided by cosec square x dx. So, we directly we do not have a formula here, but if we look at this carefully and apply the trigonometrical relationship that sec square x is nothing but 1 by cos square x and cos square x is nothing but 1 by sin square x. So, we can write it as sin square x over cos square x which is nothing but tan square x dx. Now, again we do not know the integral for tan square x. 
but we know a relationship of tan square x with sec square x and we know the integral of sec square x. So, we have to think that what we know and how we can convert the problem into formula or a problem which we already know. So, we know that the formula one plus tan square x equals to sec square x and therefore, using this formula here we can put it as sec square x minus 1 d x which will give you. So, integral of sec square x is tan x minus integral of 1 is x plus constant of integral. So, this little bit complicated looking formula after doing certain calculation we reached to a relationship which we knew and we used that relationship and we ultimately found the integral. We will put a compression of differentiation and integration One is that that both of them are operators which operate on functions. Differential is also an operator and integral is also an operator. Operators take functions as input. What I mean to say is that for example, d by dx of f x. So, it is operated on the function f x then only it gives you f prime x and similarly here integral of f x d x it is operated on the function f x to give you a function f x. So, they are operator both of them satisfy linearity property integral also satisfy linearity property this we have seen. Differentiation if we take of a function it is unique. So, derivative of a function is unique integral we have seen if we take the integral of a function it is f x plus c. So, it is not unique in the sense of u, the way we define uniqueness, but we call it as most of the time unique up to a constant which means that if we ignore the constant then those integrals are unique. You can define the derivative of a function at a point which means that it represents the direction of tangent at the point, but no such meaning can be assigned in case of integral. That means that that integral at a point has no meaning while differential at a point has a meaning of the direction of the tangent. We also have seen the geometrical interpretation for the integral for the family of curves for the case of integral and similar geometrical interpretation for d y by d x is also understood. We have seen for the case of derivative that it is a limiting process and same you will learn about integral as well is that it is limiting process. Finally, as I have already mentioned for one property is that that integrals are considered as inverse operator of differentials, but as I mentioned that that they are not essentially exactly the inverse operators because of the presence of the constant. Next we are going to learn how to evaluate integrals. So, there is no specific method which will be applied to each and every function and depending on a function on a, on, on a particular problem 
we have to apply different methods. So, we will go through them one by one. The first method which I am going to discuss for you today is method by substitution. As you can see from the name substitution, so what we do in this method is that in order to evaluate the integral f x d x, we notice that, that the independent variable here is x, we change this variable independent variable x to another independent variable t by mean of some relationship. So, for example, assume that x is some function of t which has certain properties at least differentiability so that we can differentiate it. Then this will give us d x by d t is equals to g prime t and therefore, in terms of differentials we can write it as d x is equals to g prime t d t. So, the original integral if I name it as i it turns out to be integral of f replacing x by g t d x by g prime t d t. So, the formula for integral f x d x if I make the change of independent variable from x to t it converts into another formula of integral of f of g t g prime t d t. So, I will rewrite here integral of f x d x can be written as integral of f of g t g prime t d t. Now, we have already mentioned that that these variables of integrals x and t they are dummy and therefore, uh, sometime it may also happen that instead of choosing x as g t we may choose uh, t as g x that means that t as a function of x. So, some certain function of x we can choose as, as t and then we can proceed with that uh, substitution that will be clear in due course of time. I will take very simple example. So, let us take the example here that we are to find out the integral of 2 x over 1 plus x square d x. So, we cannot immediately get this integral by uh, the elementary formulas which we already know, but if you notice that the denominator term here if you differentiate it what you will get is 2 x which is same as the numerator term here and therefore, if you look here carefully the derivative multiplied by differential can be written as differential in another variable. So, if I think this function as g x then this is nothing but g prime x d x and therefore, I can convert it into a new variable t. Let us see how we can do it. So, define t equals to 1 plus x square or sometime we also say that substitute 1 plus x square equals to t. So, that d t the differential we always write it in this fashion d t is equals to derivative that is 2 x times differential in x d x. So, d t equals to 2 x d x making this substitution in the given integral call this integral as i we shall get i as d t over t and now this form is converted into the form which we already know and this will give us log of mod t plus constant, but our problem was in x. So, we have to go back to x and therefore, 
substitute for t, make it as log of t equals to 1 plus x squared plus c. So, this becomes our final integral for this case. Another simple example integration of sin of a x plus b d x. So, you can easily see if I take a x plus b as some new variable t, we know the integral of sin t. So, to evaluate this integral, we substitute a x plus b equals to t. So, that a d x is equals to d t and the integral becomes i equals to sin t d t by a which we will put here 1 by a sin t d t. So, 1 by a integral of sin t is nothing but minus of cosine t and finally, we will add a constant c which will give you minus of cos t is already known to us is as a x plus b divided by a plus c. In fact, this relationship can be generalized which we will see in our next class that if we are given a function which is having linear term as a x plus b, then it is always the integral of that function divided by the constant. So, we shall summarize whatever we have learned today. So, we learned the properties of indefinite integrals. We also learned some elementary formula. We learned how to evaluate simple integral. We also learnt the compression of differentiation and integration and finally, we learnt the very important method, method of substitution. Thank you.